My name is Helen McCullough. I'm an area governor here in District, the Southwest Division of District 30. And with my other area governors and Division Governor Donna Weston, we welcome you to our Division Contest. My reflection today. Some of you know that I've started a job that takes me out of town Monday through Friday. Last week when I left, the weather was 80 degrees and beautiful colors of all the trees, fall-like. Lovely, look, I think I even got a little sunburned last weekend. To come home, not a leaf on a tree in my cul-de-sac. What happened? And now, bless you, this morning requiring a little jacket before I could take my dog on my walk. Yes, fall is here. But it's also a time for remembering where we've come, the journey we've made to get here today, and where we're going next. And we'll hear all about our division, our district contest at our break. What I'd like to do now, did everyone receive an agenda? Everyone received an agenda? If you did not, there's some on the table. We have plenty. I think it's important because what I'd like to do now. for the past few years that I've been involved at the district level, and I know he's the type of guy you can always go to to really help get the job done in a manner that we all become accustomed to. So let me, please join me in welcoming Jerry Evans as our toast. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mary and Governor. And thank you, Madam Southwest Division Governor Donna Weston. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Southwest Division contest this afternoon. But before we get started, for those of you who may know me or who may not know me, if you have one of these devices, which I refer to as the device of mass distraction, if you would either please put it on vibrate or silent or turn it off so we don't interrupt our speakers during the contest, I would appreciate that. And no cheating, no texting under the chairs. No tweeting, even though I know you want to do that while the contest is going on. So that takes care of the housekeeping duty. Before we get started with the actual contest, I want to recognize our dignitaries that are at the contest this afternoon. And I don't believe Srinivas is here yet. So let me recognize Michelle Cable, who's our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing. Southwest Division Governor, Donna Weston. <laughs> Northwest Area 5 Area Governor, Christina Parhas. <laughs> we have 
Sherry Gewal, uh, D33 Area Governor. And we have Cher, Shar Gildersleeve, Area 36 Area Governor. We have past District Governor, Mr. Frank Geyer. And I got ahead of myself because I would be uh, a little bit reticent if I didn't introduce him. Our immediate past District Governor, Mr. Kyle Rohde. Have I missed any of the dignitaries? Answer. Two. You didn't sign that. I just got here. Just kidding. <laughs> Our Northwest Division Governor, Linda Meekenberg. <laughs> and we referred to Linda as E, so we've now started referring to Ethel Goatee, North Division, North Area Governor, as Little E. So help me welcome <laughs> Ethel Goatee. <laughs> and Mr. Don. <coughs> Williams. Yes. Dan, I'm sorry, what? South 55. South 55. South 55. Area Governor. Don, he, he re-upped re for a second time because he was the division, Southwest Division Governor, so he re-upped to be Area Governor again. Congratulations, Don. Yes, Don. Are you done, Bob? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> All these people did sign it. And Mr. Hugh Dunbar, Fast District Governor. Hi, I'm Liz Martinez, Area 37 Governor. Have I missed anyone else? Okay, then we shall move forward. We are going to have two contests this afternoon. We'll have the Humor Speech Contest and the Speech Evaluation Contest. The first contest will be the Speech Evaluation Contest. When that contest is concluded, we'll have a short 10-minute break. Then after the break, we'll conduct the Humor Speech Contest. The judges, contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant arms have all been briefed prior to the start of the contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. I think as all of you are aware, no one should either enter or leave the room while the contest was going on during the contestants' presentations. You may, however, do so during the one minute of silence between the presentations. Thank you. With that said, are you ready for the contest to begin? Yes. Yeah. 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 I will now give you the speaking order for the speech evaluation contest. This is the order. Contestant number one, Barbara Dean. Contestant number two, Sarah Schiffer. Contestant number three, Bruce Schroeder. Contestant number four, Blaine Rada. Contestant number five, Patrick Seng. And contestant number six, Mike Vane. As Helen announced before, Gail Jenkins was disqualified because she wasn't here. Does anyone need me to repeat that? Okay. In order for the evaluation contestants to compete, of course, we need someone to speak for them. Please help me welcome to the lectern, Megan Keen. Determination, discipline, and persistence. Determination, discipline, and persistence, Megan Steen. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I'm sure many of you have moments that you're extremely proud of, and today I'm going to share with you a moment that was really special for me. It was a monumental achievement. 
I'm not talking about graduating from college with honors or getting my first job, even though it's kind of related. I'm talking about <laughs> buying my first car. Yes, I did it all on my own, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. There were three main factors that led me to actually being able to purchase this car. They were determination, persistence, and discipline. The first thing, when I was in high school and college, I really didn't need a car. I had the accessibility of my parents being great chauffeurs through high school. I rode with my friends if I wanted to go to football or basketball games. For college, I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We had a really huge campus, so I was able to walk to all my classes, and they had a very efficient bus system, so if I didn't feel like walking, I could just hop on the bus. In order to go home on the weekends or for holidays, I hopped on Suburban Express, which was very, very convenient because it dropped us off at local malls in the suburban land area. So, Oak Brook Mall was my stop all the time, which was down the street from my house, so this was extremely perfect. I graduated in 2008 in May, and I landed my first job a few months after that. I was at home applying for jobs consistently, so I was so happy when I landed my job because I was tired of being at home with my parents listening at the neck. You know. <laughs> when I got my job, I was a marketing analyst in Glenview, Illinois at Annexter International. When I landed my job, I really didn't put the commute into much consideration. I just accepted the position because they were paying me extremely well, and I couldn't beat it because it was in marketing. Little did I know I would have to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning, be on the train by 5.15, be on the bus by 6.45, and be walking into my job by 7.25 a.m. in the morning. And technically couldn't start till 8 a.m., so I was basically killing time, surfing blogs and stuff till 8 o'clock. When I went home in the evenings, I would get off at 5 o'clock. I would be on the bus at 5.15 and wouldn't get home to Broadview until a little after 7 p.m. So this was extremely draining. After the second month of me doing this, I was tired and I realized at that point, Megan, you really need to settle down and get you a car. I was talking to some people about it at work, in particular my manager, and my manager was like, Megan, you really need to focus and get a car. Aren't you tired of this? And I told him, yeah, of course. I really am going to start saving up. He's like, I don't think so. You're coming here with new clothes every week, new purses. You're really not that focused. It was that statement right there that made me determine, you're going to prove him wrong. And we actually set a bet that I was going to have a car by June 1st. This led to the next factor. I needed to get some discipline. I had to stop shopping so much. I packed my lunch every single day. Um, I also made sure that I wasn't in Oak Brook Mall every weekend. They actually knew me at Nordstrom and Nordstrom Rack. And when I went a couple times, they were like, Megan, we haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? And I told them, I'm saving for a car. So this took some serious discipline. The last thing was persistence. I was literally on the internet every single day looking for my ideal car. And my ideal car was a Nissan Murano. I felt like the Nissan Murano was perfect for a young professional such as myself. It was really, really girly. I had the exact color that I wanted. I wanted black with charcoal interior. After looking for a few months, I was getting really tired of seeing gold and, and white. And I also had a criteria that I needed a car that was going to be under 30,000 miles at a certain price point. We would go to all these different car dealerships and they would try and put me in cars over 50,000 miles or cars that were five years old. I really didn't want that. Car dealers would tell me, Megan, you're really not ready for this car. This car's gonna be a lot of maintenance. Can you afford it? But I kept up with it in May. I was on the internet one morning and I told my mom, Mom, I found this car. We need to go look at it. We rushed. My mom, my sister, and I went to the dealership, and there it was. It was a black charcoal interior, and would you believe somebody was actually test driving it when we got there? So my stomach dropped a little bit, but you know I tried to stay perky. And my mom rushed inside and found a salesman and told him, "Get that car off the lot. My daughter's buying this car today." <laughs> they pulled the car off the lot. They allowed me to test drive it, and the car was perfect. It purred like a kitten. I just loved it. So we went into the back room, got all the paperwork out, and then I actually got cold feet. I was extremely nervous. I was thinking, Megan, are you ready to buy this car? I mean, if you don't make these payments, it's going to mess up your credit. 
if the maintenance isn't going well, you're really going to have to start putting some serious money into the car. But my sister, for once, was actually the voice of reason for me. My dad, who passed away in 2009, I felt was speaking through my sister. My sister said, Megan, you've been waiting for this moment. Why are you going to hold back on something that you've been wanting for all this time? You're mature, and you can handle something like this. So it was that statement right there where I actually just signed the papers, and it was mine. And as corny as it may sound, I literally drove into the sunset with my black boots on <laughs> and charcoal interior. And I was so proud on June 1st. I purchased the car Memorial Day weekend, and June 1st, my manager came by my desk and said, so I made it. You get that car? And I jingled my keys and said, I sure did. <laughs> so this is what I'm telling you about the three factors of determination, discipline, and persistence. If it wasn't for these three factors, I wouldn't be tootling around in my car to this day. So don't allow any naysayers to tell you you can't do things. If you have these three things in your life, you can do anything you want to do. Thank you. Okay, we'll now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Madam Sergeant Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room and time five minutes beginning when they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over, please escort our first contestant back to the room. I'll also ask our Mr. Chief Timer to begin timing five minutes when they're out of the room. While the evaluation contestants complete their evaluations, how about we get to know our target speaker. Please help me welcome back to the lectern, Megan Steen. Megan? <laughs> Megan, if you could let everyone know what club you're with and what club number, if you know the club number. I am a part of Talk of the Glen at Amherst International. I don't remember the... 109. 109. Okay. And how long have you been a Toastmasters? Uh, about a year and a half. So. And what originally, what originally brought you to Toastmasters? Well, in high school, I went to Fenwick High School in Oak Park, and it was mandatory for us to take public speaking there. And in college, I also had to take a public speaking class, so I figured it would be a good idea to try and continue it now that I'm in corporate America. So that's why I joined Toastmasters. Okay. And what's your education des designation right now? Um, so how far room. how far along have you gotten in your Toastmaster journey? Oh, um, I'm on my, this is my sixth speech. Okay, so. terrific. Congratulations. <laughs> you're already halfway through your CC, so that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. How, how challenging is it for you as a newer Toastmaster to come up with different speech topics? I feel like it's easy to go off of personal experiences. I mean, it's fun to do research, but it's easier to speak off the top of your head when things that you know really well. So personal experiences are really good for me because I'm able to put my own spin on things and not sound as rehearsed. Terrific. Okay, great. I see one of your interests down here, and I'm really curious about this. <laughs> Which one am I going to pick, right? Talk to us about reality TV. So what's, what's one of your favorite reality TV shows? Monday, sad to say, I have a schedule. Monday I start watching Basketball Wives at 7 o'clock and I'm watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I just like it because it's very therapeutic after a long day of work. Okay. So I, I get a good laugh after it. Yeah. Okay. You don't happen to watch uh, Jersey Shore, do you? Thursday is 9 o'clock? Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> I, watched about a ten, I watched about a 10 minute clip of Jersey Shore last week. The one where Snooki was on the phone or something with her boyfriend, yeah. she was talking to her dad. Uh -huh. That's, it's amazing how much, from a branding standpoint, how much money she's made mm -hmm. branding Snooki. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised about yeah. that. Excellent marketing, right? I guess, I guess so. <laughs> so other than, okay, shopping. So now, are you, are you, are you a uh, shoeaholic? Are you just a clothes horse? Or what, what do you enjoy about shopping? I have to say shoes is the thing that I shop for the most. That's why I'm in Nordstrom all the time, because I have such a good shoe selection. So 
Jimmy Choo's? Jimmy Choo's. <laughs> I can't afford Jimmy Choo's just yet. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get that. Okay. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. Uh -huh. College basketball and football. Did you play sports in college? No, I didn't. I played volleyball in high school, but I went to all the games in college. So. Okay. Now, Annexter, which is your marketing analyst at Annexter. So exactly what does that entail in terms of your position? Uh, my company is an information <coughs> technology company, so a lot of my day-to-day -day activities are doing research on different business development opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I'll be looking at things like healthcare or green efficient technology. Um, I also work quite a bit on, as I mentioned before, business development, so that's talking with our sales teams, trying to help them get new prospects. So, yeah. Terrific. In terms of your Toastmaster journey at this point, what's, what would you say, what's your long-term goal in Toastmaster? <coughs> I have to get my CC. I'm almost there, so okay. I just have to CC, keep it up. No problem. <coughs> Guaranteed you'll get your CC. Mm -hmm. So beyond, okay, after, after number 10, have you thought about, you know, beyond that in terms of going to some of the advanced manuals or, you know, do you want to take it to a different level or? Oh, I would definitely love to do my advanced stuff because I've seen Donna do it and she's really good at what she does, so <laughs> I would like to try and get up there. Well, the beautiful thing is we all know, when we all start in Toastmasters, we all start kind of pretty much at the same point, so we all take that same journey. What would you say to perhaps some of our newer Toastmasters that are in the room this afternoon? What would you say to them and to encourage them to kind of continue on their journey, just based on your experience so far? Set yourself a personal goal, whether it's to step from behind the podium or to lose your note cards. And once you're able to accomplish this, then you'll start to set more goals. And as you pursue those other goals, you know, you'll see how much you can actually do and how much you can push yourself and challenge yourself. And before you know it, you'll have your 10 students. So. Okay, well, terrific. Well, thank you for being our target speaker, Megan. Thank you. Good luck. Ready to hear from our evaluation contestants right now. There will be one minute of silence between the first contestant and between each contestant. Mr. Timekeeper, when I advise you to do so, please signal me when the green light in one minute is up. And then after all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their balance. We will now begin the speech evaluation contest. Barbara Dean, evaluation contestant number one. Evaluation contestant number one. discipline, and persistence. We all have been tested in this, so it's a great subject. Her subtitle was First Car. And we all remember if we have a first car, or we drive our husband's car, or father's car, we remember that one. Uh, she did a great job. She covered all of it. She covered from graduation, to her trials and tribulations on public transportation, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, just having a terrible time, just getting it all together, and getting a job. Great experience. Now she had to determine to get a car. And that was a big decision. And she thought about it, and she got a bit of humor in this part, where she said, all the people in Oak Brook, all the salespeople knew me, so I figured I better stop shopping. Good decision. She did a great job. She took us with her, and it was, it was memorable. I, remember, I will remember this lady. But she could have used a few things to spark it up. She 
walked up and down without gestures that were appropriate, they were kind of the same. She didn't raise and lower her voice with vocal variety because everything we say can be extolled, it made bigger by a second sight, by something that's either visual or audio. So when you're preparing a speech, you could use a device and maybe something like where you put in commas, where you put in periods, where you put in exclamation points. You could gesture appropriately, like a comma, you would slow down, a period, you would pause. When you get to an exclamation point, you could maybe raise your hands or raise your eyebrows or snap your fingers. If you come to a question, maybe a frown, maybe a like, a shrug. Whatever is comfortable for the speaker. But it should not be a continuous thing that you use all the time. It should punch whatever you have to say. She did a good job. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. May we have one minute on the clock while the judges mark their ballots, and if we could please ask for silence during the one minute. Sarah Schiffer, evaluation contestant number two, evaluation contestant number two, Sarah Schiffer. If we listened to Megan Steen, we could all be driving into the sunset with three simple ingredients. Did you believe her? Contest chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and especially our good-looking, intelligent, and wonderful judges, <laughs> <laughs> and clearly Miss Dean, I did. I want to talk to you about three things that I liked about your speech and one thing that I would do differently to improve it for the next time. Three things I liked about your speech. Sincerity, your smile, and your specifics. When you opened, you told us an honest story, and your manner was honest, and your gestures were honest. That sincerity got me from the beginning and caught me through the end, and I suspect it did for the rest of us as well. Secondly, your smile. You have a beautiful, beautiful, bright smile that connects us to you, and if you want to take us on an entertaining or inspirational trip with your speech, we need to like you and trust you. So your smile helped to illustrate everything that you were talking about. Thirdly, your specifics. You had a great organization of your speech. You told us about determination, discipline, and persistence. And then you told us the story, starting with determination, with that, hey, I can stop shopping a little bit. I can show this guy I can get it. And you went on to tell us about the specific requirements for your car and the, the discipline that it took to stop the shopping, to make the lunches, 
and the persistence with the disappointments and even the potential buyer's remorse that you managed to incorporate to get your dream car. What I would suggest you improve, from my perspective, would be focused drama. If you walked in for your opening and said, do you think you can look like this without a little bit of shopping? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how you could be doing this, looking like this, with three simple ingredients by the end of this speech. So a little bit of focused drama, which you can do with your vo voice. You can have a little bit more vocal variety and your gestures. In addition, you could use that focused drama by stepping to different points in the room for each point. We start with determination. Oh, no, no, you're not going to tell me what I can do or I can't do. To get that, move over into discipline. I was making my lunch in the morning. I was stopping shopping. I had to tell the girls, I'm sorry I'm not friends anymore. And finally, through the long calendar year, making it all the way to May and the beautiful Nissan Murano. So ladies and gentlemen, I am ready to drive off into the sunset. <laughs> I am ready to incorporate more determination, discipline, and persistence into my goals because of Megan's speech. I hope that you are all too, and I look forward to seeing an even more effective, focused, dramatic speech from you next time. Thank you, Megan. Chief Timer, can I please have one minute on the clock while the judges mark for ballots? And if we can please observe one minute of silence. Bruce, <coughs> Bruce Schroeder, evaluation contestant number three, evaluation contestant number three, Bruce Schroeder. Before I begin, do all the judges have their ballots? All, the, all their judges have their ballots? Just want to make sure, because it never hurts to ask. Thank you, Megan, for speaking today. Fellow Toastmasters, apparently countless dignitaries, and guests today. For the last couple weeks since the club, club contest, all I've been doing is giving evaluations, watching television commercials radio ads, things like that. Today, I stopped at McDonald's with my daughter to get a uh, Happy Meal for her, and the lady said, Is, would you like anything else with your order? And I said, yeah, I'd like a little vocal variety out of you. Would you like anything else with your order? So Megan, thanks again. I really needed to hear a speech today, and that was a really good speech. So let's see what we can do to make it a little bit better. You started out wonderfully, you grabbed my attention, and how did she do that? She said a couple things that she wasn't going to speak about. She wasn't going to speak about other successes you had at school and college and how you graduated. And then you finally got to what you were going to talk about, buying a new car. I like that a lot. Then you easily navigated into the three main factors. And they were clearly defined not only in your title, but you talked about them. Determination, persistence, discipline. But it took about two or so minutes, as my, by my head count, 
about two or three minutes before he actually started talking about buying the car. So I noticed that, although it was a nice and easy transition, I would have liked to see that a little bit sooner into the speech. And then you got to your close. So let's talk about some things that you might be able to do a little bit better. We could talk about vocal variety. Use your voice a little bit more when you were talking about buying a car. This is a big deal, and I would have liked to see more of that. We could talk a little bit about how you shuffled around a little bit on this side. It was sort of movement, it was good, good hand gestures, but primarily on this side, you did get over there, but make it with purpose. Look at your audience, make some impact, and then move to another member. And then, what I really would have liked to see the most out of you today would have been a pause. Somewhere in the speech, just like I did there, everybody wanted to finally hear, oh my gosh, Bruce finally has a point, and he's going to make it now. <laughs> and I would have liked to see you work in a pause, maybe when you were very dramatically identifying what your car looked like. I think you could have paused there and said, and here it is. And I think that would have made a bit of big impact. But what could you improve the most on? The clothes. The clothes was truncated, it was abrupt. I would have liked you to tie it all back with some of your prior successes instead of just saying, and that's the end of my story. It was very short at the end. I think you could have did a better job there. So I think by taking a really good story and tweaking it just a little bit, you could transform this into a truly memorable presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Chief Timer, if we can please have one minute on the clock while the judges mark their ballots, and if we can please observe one minute of silence. Blaine Rada, evaluation contestant number four, evaluation contestant number four, Blaine Rada. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and especially you, Megan, you can't hide. <laughs> wow. Your first car, you know, that story that you used to illustrate your points immediately drew me in. And it made me remember that my first car was a Dodge Charger that was a piece of junk, but it looked good. <laughs> and the young man had to have a car that looked good. So initially, that story that got me right into your presentation then led me to your strengths. And one of the things that impressed me the most was that you appeared really comfortable up here. I don't know if you felt as comfortable as you looked. But you made full use of the speaking area. Your eye contact I thought was outstanding. Your use of facial expressions, your natural smile. When you speak, you just seem to almost be smiling all the time as if you're really enjoying the process. That just brought me right into the presentation. I also thought your use of humor, which it took a couple of minutes to get to that, but once you got rolling with your humor, I thought that was outstanding. It's tough to use humor if you're not comfortable, so again, I think that showed that you were feeling okay up here. And I also thought that in addition to having a universal topic and showing a lot of comfort, you were actually demonstrating those three points that you were talking about. The determination and the discipline and the persistence. 
So knowing that you believe in those things, I'd like to share some things that I think would elevate the speech to another level, things that would make it even better. Your gesturing, while good, was somewhat repetitive. And one of the things that I noticed was that you tended to do a lot of this kind of a movement, which after a while I was focusing on that. And you did a couple of hand slaps as you were gesturing. I don't know if that was intentional, but while the slap got my attention, it also distracted me a little bit. You also spoke very rapidly. Maybe that was a sign of nervousness, maybe that's just the way that you communicate. But I was waiting for some more pauses. I was waiting for a little bit of silence so that I could take in the message that you were sharing with me and not have to keep up. And I also thought that your organization had some opportunities to really reinforce those main points that you were going to make. So in the beginning when you talked about those three main points, the determination, discipline, persistence, I was waiting for like concrete pillars of those throughout the speech. And while you did weave them in, and I was able to follow, I thought there was a, a missed opportunity to really drive those points home. In fact, one of the things you could have done is talk about how the lack of those things has a certain consequence as well. And that would have made us all really think about, oh yeah, and if I don't have those things, this is what that means. Again, I think you did a fabulous job. I know you have determination, I know you have discipline, I know you have persistence, and with that, I expect to see you on a district stage sometime. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you, Blaine. So Chief Timer, can we have one minute on the clock, please? Well, the judges mark their ballots, and we observe one minute of silence. Patrick Sang, evaluation contestant number five, evaluation contestant number five, Patrick Sang. Wouldn't every one of us agree that by a car takes discipline Discipline, determination, and persistence. And so are other stuff in life. Other things, you, in order to have success in life, you need those three factors, no matter what. Postmaster, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow <coughs> Toastmasters, and especially Maggie. Congratulations on your speech. And I'm going to talk about three things that I really, really like about your speech, and two things that you can. Um, <coughs> Um, recommendations that can bring your speech to the next level even higher and I'm gonna wrap up in a one package in a summary to, to let you take home and to have you inspire other people much, much uh, in a much le uh, higher level in the future the first thing that I really like <coughs> about your speech is I noticed that when you came to the letter you came from this side and then you greeted the postmaster and then you went on continuing to this side what I like about that is you came from this side, so the audience there are already aware that you are, or your presence, and you're addressing this side as well. So I really like the overall presence of you in the room, addressing both sides of the uh, audience. The second thing that I really like, uh, very strong, is that your message is concise. Uh, you talk about the three factors at the, right at the beginning of speech, which ties into the title of your speech, which is determination, discipline, and persistence. And that's a very clear message. You talk about, um, at the beginning, you talk about most of uh, early in your life, you didn't really, really need a car. So 
uh, you didn't really have a you know need a strong reason to to buy a car, which brings us um, to the attention to really focus on you know, why do you need a car and what makes you um, uh, succeeding in getting a car. And you also talk about um, different irritations in your life with your job and getting up early to catch the bus and you know coming home late. Um, those irritations really um, highlight. Um, the, the need for us to to focus on um, um, the things that you have done, the steps that you have taken to achieve uh, the purchase of that car. The third thing that I really like is you um, at the at the closing you made a strong point, which is that um, with the three factors, anyone um, can take it and use it in their life, and to have one message in mind, which is don't let anyone stop you with three <coughs> factors that can happen and nothing you can do anything based on that so that really um, allowed us to um, have some um, very positive uh, insight from that a couple of things that you might want to work on uh, suggest um, you um, improve upon is um, when you talk about like your car you see a dream car uh, maybe speaking a louder voice exaggerating it's a black car with leather interior and the other thing that I, um, you might um, consider to work on is um, pacing, um, you know, pace with, with a reason. Um, I noticed that you have some extra pacing. So in summary, if you keep those three things positive in your uh, next speech and improve upon those two, you have a great result. Thank you, Patrick. May we have one minute on the clock, please? <coughs> Observe one minute of silence while the judges mark the bell. <coughs> Mike Vane, evaluation contestant number six, evaluation contestant number six, Mike Vane. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, guests, and especially you, Megan. I want to congratulate you on such a great speech. It was very informative, it was logical, it followed steps of determination, discipline, persistence. We knew where you were going to go with that, that speech, and we were waiting for that, and you followed that throughout the speech. Your speech was based on a timeline. You, you, you followed that timeline, it was a timeline that we could follow in your speech with you. It was also an experience that we could all relate to, buying our first car. We all remember our first car, and it was great to hear your story of buying your first car. You had great eye contact with the audience. I never felt left alone. I was way in the back, never felt left alone. You had great confidence. You moved outside of the lectern and right in front of the audience at the same time. You had great humor within your speech. Uh, I love the speech about you could buy a car, you could afford a car if you just stopped shopping so much. And that was something, you know, we all have our items that we pay way too much for, we spend way too much for, and we can understand that. And, and so, so much so that you spend so much on shopping that the people at Nordstrom's know you by name. So that, it, very humorous there. You had very descriptive words throughout. It was a black car, it purred like a kitten, and where I would maybe recommend where you can go a little bit further with that speech, a little bit further with those words, 
is you are going to buy your first car or you know that was just an overwhelming experience rolling your eyes showing a little bit more emotion with that all your words throughout the speech were very descriptive and I thought you could play those out quite a bit more there uh, I would say lastly the way that you concluded your speech we all knew it kind of fit in de determination discipline and persistence it all kind of just flowed and you wrapped it up within that speech so once again very great speech Megan and thank you for getting up here and speaking in front of this crowd Mr. thank you Mike now if we could ask everyone to please remain silent while the judges take all the time they need to mark their ballots.
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you, Madam Chief Chair. Okay, while well, we're waiting for the judges, the ballot counters, to tally everything, how would you like to hear from your Southwest Division Governor, Donna Weston, and she's going to tell us, I know you can't wait for this, the exciting details All of right. the district I'm conference. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. I do have a question for our uh, speaker, though, the target speaker. How much was the bet? Uh, oh, it was lunch. It wasn't like money. Oh. <laughs> You'd have to know our boss. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, oh, there they are. Would you like to be my Sure. So at least the first thing I'm talking about is our fall conference. When is it? November 12th. Yes, all day, one day, November 12th. So it's going to be an action-packed day because whoever wins here is going to compete at the district conference. We're going to have the evaluation contest in the morning, humorous contest in the evening. We have anyone who has achieved an educational award, free breakfast, that went over big at the last contest, banner parades, educational sessions, all kinds of things. If anybody has not heard Darren LaCroix speak before, we actually have him speaking at one of the sessions there. The other thing we're doing, which at least is new to me, is we're going to have a silent auction. So we're asking each of the clubs to donate something that people can bid on and win, and this is money that's going to go toward different programs for the district. Any questions? Silent auction. More. More details. Oh, silent auction? Well, I don't know too many more. Anybody? <laughs> I can speak to it. Okay. Somebody <laughs> speak. Specifically, they're looking for donating items that are part of the club culture. So if your cat club is known for being super friendly or they're known for staying on time, try and be creative and come up with a donation that represents the culture of your club. Does that matter? Thank you. Would a case of beer be okay then? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. So what, I, what, what kind of club well, do you want? What club? Want? club <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to join your club. Down the shell? Is that the slur club? <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, you can already go online and register, and there's lunch and dinner and activities all day long. I think there's activities afterwards, too, right? Anybody? There's dancing. dancing. For those of you that yeah. want to get on the dance floor and Get your boogie on. Kyle, I know he does. One other quick thing about Darren LaCroix. How many of you know who Darren LaCroix is? Ouch. Okay. Not that many of you in the room know who Darren LaCroix is. He's a 2001 world champion of public speaking. <coughs> For those of us who've attended the Toastmasters International Convention every year, International Speech Contest, someone is crowned the world champion of public speaking. And Darren LaCroix was able to do that in 2001. For those of you who have not heard him speak, go online before the conference and please listen to him because you'll be thrilled the way he speaks. He'll not only be doing our Achievers Breakfast, doing a keynote for that, he'll be putting out an educational session and he'll be our keynote speaker for dinner. During the dinner, fitting enough, he'll be doing a speech based on humor, which ties in with the humor speech contest that will be held that evening. So please go online, listen to Darren, and please come out and support it because you have an opportunity to hear truly, he's not only a world-class um, champion of public speaking, but he's also a world-class individual, and he's a type of speaker. Blaine knows who he is, Connor knows who he is, a number of us in this room know who he is, and he's very giving of his time, and if you get an opportunity to speak to him one-on-one, -on -one, Darren is very engaging, so you can really learn a lot from Darren McCoy. Terrific. Now, one other event I want to talk about. There is a special event coming up on October 29th at the Willowbrook Hotel. I haven't been there yet. And I see some of the people that are involved in the program are here right now. So we do have flyers on the conference. We also have flyers on the special event. We're going to have some special sessions, and Stan is going to be doing an evaluation session. And we're going to also have one on trying to find your why in Toastmasters and a couple other sessions. 
And then in the afternoon, we're going to have a speechathon, which we're calling a spookathon, because we've decided that since it's so, or I did at least, so close to Halloween, that we should come in costume if you want. And we're going to have a costume contest party. And I've already got my nails and my earrings ready. And so we have slots for, I think, about 12 to 15 people to do speeches. So try to work toward your CCs, try to earn your banner before the end of the year, your free banner. So we want you to sign up for that. And we are also still looking for a club that would love to <coughs> sponsor the speech of thought. I can't. So if any of you would like to do that, it's just kind of helping moving it along and, you know, getting a few people signed up, things like that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> any questions? Who's your spook master? I don't know. Are you volunteering? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my costume is yet, but I will come back. <coughs> ten more minutes? Ten no. minute break. Oh, I was going to say, I don't talk for ten more minutes. <laughs> 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 Boy, let's see, what's my next speech? Anyway, let's take a break, ten minutes. <laughs>